Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call. <clears throat> Excuse me, for Sunday, July 19th, 2020, 3 p.m. Eastern. It's, uh, it's interesting when we are using different things in this life, when we, you know, every day, everyday things that we use um, and we pretty much expect them to be available to us we don't really think about them we don't uh, we don't pay attention to them quite frankly you know, they're just there and they've always been there so we you know and this is a perfect understanding of what it's like to be in deep gratitude and what it's like to not be in gratitude at all. Uh, when we take even the littlest things that, have, you know, seem to have always been there and we don't really give it a second thought until and you begin to realize that, you know, well, I don't have this, but I can adjust to this, this, and this. And it's amazing, you know, how we can adapt so quickly, in most cases, to things that we pretty much our whole lives have had that, you know, they're just always there and we don't have to worry about it and we don't think about it. We just use them and, you know, it makes our experience different. Um, but when you start to realize is that, that what's staying, what is, what is being and deep gratitude. You know, we, we talk a lot about that, but what does it really mean? How, you know, it, it, when, when you're in that, uh, when you make that decision to be there, it's always there. It's not once in a while. It's for everything. You see a lot of people think that's silly because, well, why, you know, okay, so it's their big deal, you know. It, it's there and I use it, so what? But and to get into the understanding and to realize that every single thing in this existence you show gratitude for. You know why you feel gratitude for it? Because you have the opportunity to experience physical life. You have that opportunity. You're in it. Okay? It's like if you walked everywhere. You, know, you didn't have transportation and you had to walk everywhere. Now imagine how you would view that. You, would, you, you wouldn't think about having a vehicle because you didn't have one and you basically would settle into figuring out the best way to get to a certain point A to point B by walking. And you would have to locate to an area that would have to, <laughs> excuse me, close things close to proximity where you could actually walk to them uh, and that's pretty much it and then you would probably for, in the beginning you'd watch people who were driving by and stuff like that and you'd be envious to say boy wouldn't it be nice if I had transportation you know, where I could drive and wouldn't that be great now unless you have you know, experienced the fact that not having a vehicle I've experienced that a few times in my existence where you didn't have a vehicle, you didn't have transportation, you didn't have money to pay for transportation. So you had to figure out where you, how you were going to maneuver to get to certain places, period. And that's what's on your mind. That's what you're thinking about. Okay, so you get up morning and say, well, I've got to go here. How long is it going to take me? And what's my best route? to expedite me from going from point A to point B. And uh, you just do it. And then, then you know, for instance, you, 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 you get a wagon. You know, like a kid's wagon. You find it in the woods somewhere. This is this happened to me. And you find this wagon, and it seemed like it worked really good because, you know, it had all the wheels on it, and there were no divots or anything. It was a little rusty, but the handle worked, and everything was a little squeaky. Uh, but... It just it appeared in the woods. It was just there. And I had taken this route many times uh, to go to the grocery store. It was about five miles from where I lived. And so 
I, you know, imagine walking this all the time, and then all of a sudden you see this handle uh, in the woods. At first you think it's, eh, it's just, you, you don't think much about it, but then you look closer and go, oh, that's a wagon. So I used that wagon for quite a while to take my groceries and put it in the wagon, and then drag, then pull it all the way back uh, to where I lived. And it's interesting how we can, can create to reality certain things, whether you know it or not. When you, like with me, when I had that, um, I thought about, I didn't give it, you know, I didn't give it a lot of attention, but I thought about, boy, it'd be great if I had something on wheels that, you know, I wouldn't have to have these, uh, I had these like uh, canvas uh, sacks, satchels things that you put all the groceries in and then you'd put it around your neck and then it, it, it would hang, but it was easier to do it that way than to just sit there and carry the groceries. So, and I said, boy, it would be nice if I had some kind of, I said this to myself, if I had some kind of a wagon or something or um, that I could use uh, to put the groceries in. And sure enough, it showed up in the woods. And I, and I was so happy and grateful. Now that seems simple to a lot of people. It seems insignificant. Well, why would you get so excited about a rusty old wagon? And because it eased the what you had to do and carry things. Now it's all it's really interesting that when we have things, we and, and we have all these different things, and we take it for granted because we get so used to it, and it's no big deal. We don't appreciate it because we get so used to it. So we don't. We're too busy thinking about the future and the past. See, and we just we just don't uh, we, we don't see it. Period. And especially when you have a bed, and then you don't have a bed. It's a big it's different when you sleep on a park bench, night after night after night. And you but you you had a bed at one time, and you you, you kind of reminisce about how wonderful that bed felt. And it was it you know and you. And it's important to understand these things because a lot of people don't experience this. They don't experience having not having anything, okay? But they go through life worrying all the time that they may not have anything. They're always worried that something may happen that they won't have anything, that they'll lose it all. And this is externalism. And the reason it's externalism is because we allow the external uh, influences to control us and to direct us. Uh, and you, you begin to realize that because, you know, some things happen that occur in our existence or lives at certain times that, that kind of make you, they, they bring it into focus, certain things. Um, you know, being accosted in, a, in, a, in a, uh, a parking lot outside of a grocery store because uh, the, the, the individual but wearing a mask didn't, they see that it was a good idea that you weren't wearing a mask. And so they became very agitated and uh, uh, verbally violent. So you, you begin to realize the difference. It's really important to realize the difference of being in deep gratitude by cameralism, okay, and consciousness. When you have, bicam when you have a bicameral civilization, and that's what we have on this planet, okay? Uh, most of most of the civilization is bicameral, bottom line. Uh, but there's those of us who aren't. We're conscious, okay? There's some that are at different stages of consciousness, you know, beginning, middle, and advanced, okay? Doesn't make it any better than anybody else, but that's how it's structured. So when you're in bicameralism, you don't appreciate anything because you can't, because you can't think for yourself. You, you, you cannot lead yourself or govern yourself. So you, you only rely on external authority. That is what guides your life and direction. You, 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 you are not, you do not have the understanding that you are conscious. It's important for everybody across this country and around the planet to know that. It's not to judge, but to understand. I am dealing with a bicameral being and to know what it means so that you can understand where they're coming from, okay? 
when you're in a situation and you cannot communicate, you know, openly in any direction with a bicameral being, you can't communicate with them if you're doing it from a conscious level. And unless you're a form of an authority, then they will listen to you. If you try to communicate with them, you know, directly, they'll become agitated because they'll look at that as a an attack or a disrespect, which will agitate them and cause them to become more forceful. So you, and it's, see, a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people, you know, I used to talk with certain people and say, I wonder why they're not, it doesn't seem like they're understanding what I'm saying. And it gets frustrating because a lot of times you'll be talking with a bike camera and you won't know it. And they will, they won't understand what you're telling them. You, you, you just won't. And you will assume, which isn't a good thing to do is assume, but you'll assume that they understand what you're saying. And that's why we have a breakdown in communication on a lot of, on a lot of levels on this planet because there's so many bicameral beings at different, different degrees. Uh, there's extreme bicameralism, which is basically you no know, one void. You, you, you're not able to communicate with them uh, in any, any uh, deep fashion at all. And this is all about navigating this existence and understanding that. Now, you, the only thing you can do with bicameral people is love them. Um, and when you're in gratitude, it's much easier. And gratitude is so important for each and every one of us to be in it 24 seven. And people go, how can I be grateful for this or that? You know, why would I be grateful for this? Or why would I be appreciated? Why would I appreciate this or that? Because literally when you experience things, when one minute you, they're there and the next minute they're not, it really wakes you up. And if that happens a few times in your life, then it really wakes you up to make you realize that anything, anything that you have or that you interact with could be gone in a blink of the eye. Anything, your fingers, your hands, your feet, your eyesight, your hearing, I mean anything, and, and see people People always uh, identify it as physical, you know, uh, having uh, a car, having money, or, or having clothes, and house, and that type of thing. But it's, it's more, it's your physical body parts, it's your organs. Uh, when they're not there, you don't have them anymore. Probably people who don't have certain organs uh, and what they experience when that happens in the body, or they don't have a limb, they're missing a limb. Uh, you, those who have everything, when I mean physically with the body, they don't think about that stuff because they don't really need to. See? And they don't, it, the motivation to be in gratitude, appreciation for what they are, what they have, really doesn't happen a lot it, uh, until something draws their attention to it or they don't have it anymore. If you if you lost your big toe completely, you would have a heck of a hard time walking because that big toe balances your, fo your foot and it, it gives strength and a balance to you. Uh, without that big toe, you'd have difficulty maneuvering. And you wouldn't think about that at all until the big toe is gone. I know this may sound silly to some of you, but it is, in retrospect, you start to realize that every single thing that we have in this life is absolutely precious. I don't care if it's a hangnail. It's the same thing. We, we take things so for granted until it's not there, then we're just totally discombobulated because it's not there. You know, you could go from living in a really nice uh, environment, everything's wonderful, to, to living on, you know, out in the dirt in the, in the outside, which isn't that bad because the earthing and the energy is great. But you, you begin to realize that nothing is permanent. 
in this physical life, nothing really is permanent. Even if you're immortal, you, there's things that you'll just let go by the wayside. You have no need for them. So you, everything that you come into, you are an exuberation. You're happy about it. You're happy to be in the body. That's where it all begins. You're happy to be in the body. You know how easy it is for us to take everything eh, big deal. You know? Well, okay, so I have this and I have that. And how easily we become bored and dissatisfied with things because our attention span is short and we need to be entertained a lot and we don't know how to do that in most cases. So we kind of wander and bump here and bump there and then we say, well, you know, have you ever looked at your hand and said, man, I'm really glad I got five fingers, you know, on each hand? Or when you, you take care of someone, uh, a loved one, for several years and you watch as they deteriorate, uh, and then you look at yourself and say, I am just so deeply grateful. And then they'll say to you, like when I took care of my mother for 20 years, I, I watched as things deteriorated. And uh, she said, you know, you ought to be really grateful for your body and everything that you have that comes with it. And that's true because you look at you look at uh, people when the bodies are failing them uh, and then you don't really look at yourself because you're in fear of saying I'm, I'm not going to ever get that way it's amazing I've heard so many people say that years later they're that way and if you're fortunate enough to last that long if the body lasts that long so when we look at like immortality uh, and we realize, would you be grateful for immortality? Would it be long-term great gratitude or would it just be novelty gratitude in the beginning? And then you would just take it for granted. Well, I'm mortal and I, you know, my body doesn't age and I can lie, I can live for as long as I choose, thousands of years. Would you take it for granted? How do you know if you would or not until you have it? It's that's the way it is with everything. And like you know, when our hearts are filled with gratitude, then we are truly rich. That's it. But that you want to know what rich is? When your heart is filled with gratitude. And just take a moment to feel deeply grateful for everything in your life. And share your appreciation with someone you love today. It feels so good to have a heart that's fully alive and you can easily radiate infinite abundance everywhere you go. Okay? It's when your, your heart is filled with gratitude for everything in your life right now, right in this moment. And then when you share your appreciation with someone that you love on how great you're grateful you are for yourself, for them, uh, for everything. And not just once in a while. Because a lot of us have a tendency, oh, well, I'll visit that and uh, you know, I'll be grateful for this and that and be genuine about it. And then we just let it fly away. Uh, you know, we, we only do it, give it a couple visitations so, so often. But filling the heart with deep gratitude and, and sustaining that gratitude, it, it, it just shifts everything. It really does. I don't care if you just have um, one pair of shoes. And I know some people that on this planet have one pair of shoes, two outfits to last them the whole year. Okay, and just whatever it is that you are experiencing is to be grateful for it. Because when you get into the mode of being not grateful, you, your frequencies and your joy in this life is greatly suppressed. And people just don't think about it that much to say, you know, that they be in gratitude. And why are you in gratitude? What, what do you have to be grateful for? 
I've had people say, what do I have to be grateful for? I don't have anything. I, I don't have a roof over my head. I don't have any money. I have to panhandle. And I have, and I, why should I be grateful? You know, I've had people say, this life sucks. This is unfair. And see, those attitudes, no matter what your situation is, is what brings in more of that, the very thing that you're detesting at the time you're experiencing it. We attract, we attract it, we, we create it, we generate it. And that's what's the challenge sometimes for some of us is, is that we, we, we don't understand that, okay, so how did my life get this way? What did I do to create it? That, and that's true. You're not blaming yourself. You're identifying certain things that to, uh, to, to be clear about that so you navigate and you gain the knowledge where you say, okay, through these experiences, this is what I created. This is what happened. So now I know that. Now I'll shift my frequency and my attitude and direction so that this is gone. I, I'm not in it anymore. And anybody can do that, but it's discipline and commitment and the love you have for yourself. That's that's crucial. If, if you have issues with yourself, you don't love yourself. You have issues with unfinished business within you. Uh, you know, things in your life, things that are uh, d d not connected, that haven't been tended to by you. Uh, you know, the sweep it in the closet and forget it for another time type things. Uh, and to just build and build and build. And you carry that burden, that heaviness, because you've decided to do so rather than release it and relinquish it and surrender to it so that it's gone. And this is crucial because if you look at people, other people, other parts of us on this planet, they have emotional challenges because they've suppressed a lot of things about themselves. And that's it. And if you don't understand you imagine if you, you, when your chakras are out of balance, one or two of them, and you have different physical issues, and it's never identified through the, the, the energy vortexes in our bodies, and, and it's always identified from the physicality, the, the biological, when the root of the situation started with the energetical, the, the energy vortexes, the, the chakras, that's where it began. But it's, it's very rarely addressed. So these are all things uh, that, that flow in our existence. And when we have a, a, a heart filled with abundance, an abundant filled heart, where your heart is filled with abundance, abundance of, of gratitude, abundance of appreciation every day, Every moment, moment to moment, it's just like flowing naturally. And you, you don't have, you, you know, it's like you don't have to run around telling everybody you're grateful. But you, it, to yourself, you can be anywhere and, and have this rush of gratitude because you've been, you, you've engaged yourself with it so often that it's pretty natural to be in it all the time. And this fills the heart with abundance. Fill your heart with abundance. People don't even know what that means. What does that mean, fill your heart with abundance? What am I supposed to do, get a bunch of money and try and stuff it in my heart? And that's unfortunate because a lot of people think that all that abundance is is money. And it isn't. That's a small part of it. Abundance is being healthy and happy with yourself. Being in love with yourself. Being in deep gratitude with yourself and everything that you are. This is... That's an, uh, an abundantly filled heart, a heart filled with abundance. And when you can walk this planet as a God on earth, as heaven on earth, and you can have that and sustain that, where do you think it's coming from? It's coming from the God within you, the pure consciousness, source of creation. You know, we, have, we have that flow, we have that frequency, we are that. Yet, we lock it off from ourselves. We lock it away. And we're totally embraced with the physical, the, the uh, externalism on the planet. 
And this is what gets us so lost, you know, confused, frustrated. It's like someone saying, uh, who's at the helm of this ship? How come you're not how come you're not navigating it? You're the navigator and you look at them and go, what are you talking about? You aren't even aware you're the navigator. You gotta get up there and you've got to be at the wheel of the ship because it, it's not gonna make it if you don't navigate it and you aren't aware that you're the navigator. And you go, what do you keep what do you keep saying that for? Because that's what you wanna go over there and do it. So when your heart is filled with gratitude, you will easily radiate infinite abundance everywhere you go. Easily. Radiate. Infinite abundance. Everywhere you go. How many people you know do that? How many people do you know that do that? How many people you don't know that do that? How many people that you see do that? It's never been about things around you. It's always been and always will be what's inside of you. Who and what you are. It's never about the external influences outside of you. All that is, is an experience. That's it. And until the civilization begins to realize that everything is within them, they will continually have issues and challenges, some insurmountable from the perspective of who and what they are and not knowing who and what they are. So in this meditation, fill your heart with abundance. How do you do that? You stay in gratitude 24-7 to fill your heart with abundance. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted, and I'm sure we all are. And the first thing that we want to do is relax our bodies. Now, people can take vacations and think, you know, R&R, rest and relaxation. They can take them, you know, they can take a vacation, let's just hang out on the beach and really, you know, just kind of meander around us to resort town and you know, da 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 da. And then we, we, we leave and we get home and we're exhausted from the vacation. It's crazy, isn't it? So you relax the body naturally, you drop your shoulders. And you have two ways of being, you, you have two, two choices, okay? You're, you're, and it's your choice, no one else's. No one can force you, right? It's you, it's up to you. you you're, you're on a river, it's rushing, it's got rapids, okay? And you have, uh, you see a bunch of people uh, over to your left, and they're, they're like on this river highway. And, but it's going against them. The current of that river is going against them, so they're fighting it constantly. And you watch them as they're grimacing, and their faces are beet red, and they're soaked in water, and they're con they got their oars, and they're constantly digging and pulling, trying to fight that current to get to their destination. And they're not, they're only focused on that. They don't see you. They're focused on that completely. And by being focused on that, they miss so many things that pass them by. You, on the other hand, have chosen to be in a boat going the opposite direction that they are. You're following the current. And on your side of the river, on, on your, your highway, the, the, the water is soft and, and it's non, uh, it, it isn't aggressive, but the current is strong and swift. And it's just taking you right along. And as you as you realize that the body's just you're, you're just laying back, you have no concern, no worry, no stress. Even when you look at the others as they're literally fighting upstream, 
it doesn't affect you. You're just kind of like, you're in the space of the God that you are. So you relax the body and you choose to relax the body just like you choose to be on, in that boat on that current and that current's literally taking you to your destination, wherever that may be. So as we relax the body, and we eliminate this release, all the things that you may have, have attacked, attached to yourself in the last 24 hours, it really doesn't serve you the higher good of the higher frequency of deep eternal love or gratitude or great abundance, period. So you release it, and then we move in to the now. And the now is all we have. We can debate it, argue it, but when it all washes out, the now is what we have and always will have. Moment to moment, not the past. Some people will go into the past. It's nothing wrong, you know. It's not a negative when you reminisce and you do this and you do that, but it's very dangerous because it feels so good to go over things that are dead, that don't exist anymore, and to try to, you know, rekindle them, bring them to the surface. And then when you you do that too much, you end up taking that past into a future that doesn't exist, create that future from that past, and relive that past in that future. And that's why a lot of people will say, either to themselves or others, sometimes it feels like I'm running in circles and have been my whole life. So we don't go in the future, the future hasn't been created yet. We don't wonder, because we're in the moment, moment to moment we're creating our future because you're consciously aware of exactly what you're doing every single moment to moment. And you're in gratitude for what you're doing, whatever it may be. And the now stills the ego mind. And it stills the mind. The mind has no control, guys. It is everywhere. It isn't structured. It's flailing around everywhere. Why do you think you get all these crazy thoughts at times? It is all this noise and chatter that you're constantly hearing. It, it, it's coming from where? The ego mind. The mind. That's why you do everything you can to leave the mind alone so that the mind becomes quiet. By moving into now, into the now, moment to moment, you quiet the mind and you still it. And the ego mind basically is on the couch of sleep. So when you do this, peace flows. Tranquility, benevolence flows with you. And then on top of that, so that you can really embrace, you want to breathe, and you want to breath in through the nose and out the mouth. And, you know, bottom line, with, with very few exceptions on this planet, the breath is very powerful. It's magical. And it's divine. Our breath is divine positive energy. So when we bring this divine positive energy in, it sustains these bodies that our God is in. Calms us, relaxes us, eases, eliminates stress, tension, and most of us don't even pay it any attention. So if you will, visualize this in your breathing. We have seven chakras, energy vortexes going, and you're, sit, you're seated, seated in a comfortable position, but you get these seven energy vortexes. Look like flower petal shaped uh, geometric wheels of light. And they're connected to different glands and organs in your body and they are responsible for uniform distribution of your God energy, your God light energy, your chi, your prana, your life energy. And that's through them. And when there is a disruption in your life energy or a blockage in any or one or more of your chakras, 
be you may suffer from health or medical issues. Now, the chakras form the energy ecosystem of every single one of us in these bodies. And a deficiency in this ecosystem can wreak havoc in the different areas of your life. You, you can look at it, look at it, look at it, and you will be able to find out that it is absolutely not debatable. So visualize, picture it, if you will, in your heart and mind that we take this divine positive energy breath that we've taken in through our noses, and we come into the sacral chakra with it. And that's the Molinhara, and that's the red wheel of light. And this is energy, stability comfort, safety, I am. And then we move it up through the orange wheel of light, the sacral chakra, the Vajrasthana, and this is sensuality, sexuality, pleasure, sociability, I feel. And remember, as we're doing this, keep one eye on the little guy, the ego. Make sure it doesn't push you off track. Now we move it through the divine positive energy, our breath through the yellow chakra, uh, the yellow wheel of light, the solar plexus chakra, the manapura, strength, personality, power, determination, I do. Then we move it up to the green wheel of light, the heart chakra, the anahata. This is acceptance, love, uh, compassion, sincerity, I love. And then we move it up through the throat chakra, the vishuddha, the blue wheel of light, communication, expression, creativity, inspiration, I talk. And then through the violet wheel of light, the third eye chakra, the ajna, intuition, lucidity, meditation, trust, I see. And then up through the crown chakra, the self rama the knowledge, consciousness, fulfillment, spirituality, I understand. Now, visualize this, that you've done this, and you've, you've brought this divine positive energy up to all of your your eco system of your seven chakras you know, through the center of your body and it is supercharged and you hold it for a brief period of time I am light, I am love, I am and when you do this just in that small moment of holding you compress it and condense it into pure liquid frequency energy and you release it over the pineal gland now, you can view your pineal gland as any way you want it, uh, it currently in the moment, as a prune or raisin, whatever. Uh, I see it as a rosebud, and I see as I release this liquid energy over it, that it completely opens up into a beautiful, vibrant, multicolored rose with wonderful friends. And it is immortal. And it's vibrant, healthy, fully functioning. And that's how I see in this visualization how the pineal gland becomes fully operational and healthy and vibrant. It's important to us, this organ is important to us in these, while we're in these bodies because it is the gateway to all the particles of existence. It is the gateway to pure consciousness. It is the gateway to beyond. So I and you can see how important that organ is for it. So you do this visualization as much as you choose, whenever you choose. This is very, it's very empowering and it clarifies for you exactly on, you know, who and what you are. So we're all consciously aware that we are the highest, deepest eternal love from the highest, deepest eternal love and the highest, deepest eternal gratitude and we're all one, we know that we have merged with the God within us, the kingdom of God, and we know that we are one with the heart mind. We are one with the soul, the spirit, the higher self, however you label uh, the different parts of the one, we are still one. And as we understand this and embrace it, we also understand is that this is a massive meditation that we are gathering here at this planet Earth, Gaia Arya, and this now uh, from every facet of our existence to liberate this civilization and to lift it into a much higher dimensional frequency of 5D and beyond. 
This isn't a forcing, it's not manipulation. It is basically flooding our other parts of ourselves with love and gratitude. So we have others with us immediately. We have the archangels, the cherubim, the seraphim, and the archetypes. Now they're consciously aware that they are the highest, deepest, eternal love from the highest, deepest, eternal love and the highest, deepest, eternal gratitude. And there are numbers of the trillions. They are a civilization that vibrates at a different frequency than we do. This is why we do not see them, okay, as we see each other. And they will appear in humanoid form in the most just unbelievable ways that you would not even begin to imagine. And if you're conscious and, and clear enough, you'll pick up their frequency. They, they just appear in strange, in different places at different times, and you can tell when it is an angel in humanoid form by the frequency and the energy that you feel in your heart. It's always the heart mind that you're feeling this. It's not the ego mind. It's not your mind mind. And you'll know it. You'll know it every single time. Could be anywhere. They just appear out of nowhere. And the next thing you know, you're looking up and they're having a conversation with you. And they're, they're super friendly. And it's like they don't care to end the conversation. You sit there and talk with them for hours. And thousands can surround any one of us at any one time. And the reason that is, is because their frequency allows them to only occupy a small space in great number. And they've assisted us for a very long time, and we've assisted them for a long time. Then we have the Ascended Masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, St. Germain, Sananda, Jesus, St. Moria, Abedantia, Pell, Thought, many, many, many more. And who are they? Who are these ascended masters? Are they better than us? More powerful than us? Nope. Are they more special than us? Nope. These are beings who have ascended out of physical form and maintain pure God form consciously. We are ascended beings who ascend into these bodies to experience this life, this experience, this physical experience. And we assist each other. We always have, always will. In a way, every one of us are ascended masters to varying degrees. And as we become more and more acclimated and experienced, we will become more and more masterful in our ascensions. Now, so there's three of us, three groups. The Ascended Masters, and we're all consciously aware of who and what we are, and the Archangels. So we immediately are calling out to all of the particles and all the facets and reflections of the One, of Source Creator, of all that we are part of, of all that we are made of deep eternal love from. And so we call out to all the light energy beings and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. Only those who are consciously aware that they are of the highest, deepest, eternal love from the highest, deepest, eternal love can be with us in this now, in this meditation, the forming of the circle of light. And they come in the Google plexus. One Google plexus fills this entire universe. They come in trillions of Google plexus from every direction. And they are with us now. We call upon all the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, and dark and beneath earth. Many, many, many different civilizations and species. Only those who are consciously aware that they are the highest, deepest, eternal love, from the highest, deepest, eternal love, and the highest and deepest, eternal gratitude, can be with us in this now, in this meditation, of forming the circle of light. And they come in the billions. And they are with us now. We call upon all the galactics, all of the off-worlders, all the celestials, and only those who are of the highest, deepest eternal love, from the highest, deepest eternal love, and the highest, deepest eternal gratitude, 
and are consciously aware of this can be with us in this now, in this meditation, in the forming of the circle of light. Now, they've been assisting us in our evolution, enlightenment, ascension, freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and our own self-imposed slavery. And there's over a thousand species, civilizations that go through this, this uh, solar system every day. It's real busy out there. And just to name a fraction of our uh, awareness of there are different civilizations and species. We have the Pleiadians, the Syrians, the Andromedans, Arcturians. We have the Jeterticuli, different levels, species. We have the Chile. Uh, we have the Greys, different level species. And we have the Lords. And we have the Abions and the Golden Pyramids. Uh, it goes on and on. I mean, the universes are teeming with life. And they are with us now. We call upon all of our loved ones, all those who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we've inhabited. And only those who are consciously aware that they are the highest, deepest, eternal love from the highest, deepest, eternal love and be with us in this now, in this meditation, and this forming of the circle of light. And they come in the buildings. And they are with us now. We call upon all the light energy beings who have decided to be housed in the following forms, on and in, on and above and below this planet Earth, Gaia, Aria, and this now, this meditation, in the forming of this circle of light. Only those who are consciously aware that they are of the highest, deepest eternal love from the highest, deepest eternal love and the highest, deepest eternal gratitude and be with us in this now in this meditation and this forming of this circle of light. Now, they come in the trillions. It's just a fraction of our familiarity of them. Fairies, sprites, the elves, gnomes, dwarves, trees, the trolls, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether, the mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, and the minotaur. Many, many, many more. They come in different colors, shapes, sizes, forms, configurations, which many we've never even seen before. And they are with us now. So all of us, from every reach of existence, all consciously aware of who and what we are, arm in arm, hand in hand, we form this massive, white, light circle around this planet Earth, Gaia, Aria, and this now, this meditation. Massively brilliant and bright, rays out the darkness of space. All of our gods, we are in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, and abundance. All of us are of and from the highest of the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude. And we are all of and from the highest of the deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love. And we are all one, we are all love, and we are all God. And our God-like energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, forever, beyond, and, and, and ever. And it continues to intensify and it continues to expand. 
it would take over a billion suns to come close to the brightness, the brilliance of the light that we have formed with the gods within each and every one of us. The God light energy. So we begin to levitate above the planet. And as we do this, we're immediately met with a gossamer field that is everywhere. And it's filled with trillions of reflective light shimmering and glittering, glimmering of just many, many, many different vibrant colors. It is a reflection of all of us as part of the one, as part of Source Creator, part of all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever be on and forever. And it's everywhere, and it is of the highest of the highest high frequencies, like everything, and deep eternal love and gratitude flooding all of our brothers and sisters, this entire civilization, eternally, perpetually, nonstop. And you can visualize that through your heart mind and see the effects of this. As our frequencies continue to go up and increase, the negativity, the darkness, the lower dark matter frequencies continually be just vaporize their being depleted at a breakneck speed and eventually will be gone. So as we continue to levitate up the planet we, in this gossamer field, we are met with the emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael. This is a column that reminds us that we are the power of healing. Then immediately after that, we're met with the violet, blue, purple, flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is the poem that reminds us of our power, our resolve, and our strength. Then we're met with the white fire. This column reminds us that we are imbued head to toe, inside and out, eternally, with this white fire, God-light energy armor of the highest, highest, high frequency of deep eternal love and gratitude cannot be penetrated. You cannot be harmed. Ever. No hexes, uh, no nothing. But the only thing, only you, with the power that you are, can diminish your armor if you decide to move yourself into lower dark matter frequencies or lower survival matter frequencies, and you will weaken your armor enough so that they can come flooding in. And if this does happen, and you do decide to do that, you are then met with the purple transmuting flame. This column reminds you that if you do do that, you will be able to bring in the purple transmuting flame and literally transmute all of those lower dark matter and survival matter frequencies into neutral light substance and sending right back to pure consciousness where they become no more. Then you're met with the column of the violet ray. This column reminds you that you can bring in the violet ray right behind the purple transmuting flame and you can purify and cleanse the whole area that you allow these frequencies, these low dark matter frequencies, survival matter frequencies to come in. And lift your vibrational frequency into restoring your white light armor, your God armor, into bliss and joy and happiness and deep eternal love and gratitude. Totally restored. Now, we're also met with the golden white pink light. This is a column that reminds us of the gods that we are, the love that created us everywhere. It's in our skies across the planet. You, and sunsets across this planet, you can see it in hundreds of sunsets and sunrises. You can see it rainbows. You can see it just by viewing the beauty and the splendor of the planet because it's part of you and you're part of it. And you relish in the understanding and complete humbleness, the joy, the beauty, the power, and the grace that you are. So you're reminded always of the love that you are. 
why don't we continue to get to levitate ourselves up and as we do this some of us carry physical form decide to step out and fly to our bodies and effortlessly float above them as we do this we're met with this massive crystal and light tower that we that we created designed and we look at it and it's larger than the solar system so we see this massive uh, energy of trillions of vibratory pulsating different light colors it, it looks like a pulsating aura uh, it's, it's like trillions of rainbows and it's flooding everything and everything with deep eternal love and gratitude so we, we look through and we can see through it and then we look at the top and we design it so the golden ocean can cascade down 360 degrees eternally perpetually and this too is flooding the entire civilization all of our brothers and sisters everything and everything with the highest and the highest high of deep eternal love and gratitude now the golden ocean is able because we designed it so it could cascade down 360 degrees each of us are drops of that golden ocean and each of us hold the essence of that ocean, that golden ocean. And it is flooding, saturating, and bathing everything and everything. And deep eternal love and gratitude. Then we look a little bit over and we see this massive meditative sphere. It's at center circle. It houses all of our meditations in perpetual motion. And, and this is moving towards three years of that and moving closer and closer to 900 meditations in perpetual motion being intended and delivered collectively from us who are around the planet every single day and this is flooding us and saturating us imbuing us with the highest of the highest high deep eternal love and gratitude gentleness, kindness generosity, humbleness bliss, joy, peace tranquility, benevolence, abundance feel it you can feel it through your heart mind you can witness it with your brothers and sisters being continually flooded with it. This is why this sphere that we've created, this meditative sphere, can be seen, heard, and felt, and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, forever, beyond, and ever. It continues to intensify every single second, every single day, and it continues to expand. Very exciting. feel all of these creations that we've created feel the power feel the love and the peace and the joy and the abundance that's flooding through you around you, above you and below you non-stop, eternally and all of our brothers and sisters all life, the highest value in the universe it's, it's everywhere it's not going away it isn't sparse it is absolutely everywhere. And it continues to intensify and continues to expand. How? Uh, uh, uh.